It's turning out to be a bright and sunny day in snowy Davos and such a pleasure to have with us in our studio, Pierre Baudouin, the President and CEO of Bombardier. Thank you so much, sir, for talking to us here on NDTV. You couldn't be complaining about the weather coming from, Mon from Montreal. No, not at all. In <laughs> fact, in Montreal today, it's minus 25. Oh, okay. So, so the minus 5. <laughs> okay, yes. this is warm for you. Yes, yes. Certainly not for us coming from India. Minus 5 mm. is certainly freezing temperatures. But let's take a check on the global temperatures as such, the, the global economy. Uh, what's the mood looking like in Davos? Uh, is optimism now finally returning? I think there's quite a bit of optimism, uh, particularly if I look for us. We feel really a comeback of the... Uh, U.S. economy, uh, some growth in the U.S. again, which is important for the world economy. Of right. course, there's still some emerging countries that are doing very well, but having the U.S. economy come back is important for everybody. So I think uh, generally the mood is upbeat. Mood is upbeat, but concerns still remain. Now, what, according to you, could be some of the significant risks in 2030? Well, you know, there's the world of financing uh, for corporation, uh, for countries. Uh, you know, how do we find ourselves out of, uh, find a way out of the credit crisis that we've been living through uh, for right. the countries and for, for the companies. That concern will remain and we're learning to live with it and, and adjust our business behaviors uh, according to this new reality, if I can say it this way. Does the new reality also mean that globalization in a way is becoming a, a, a dead term? So to say, do you, do you feel governments are becoming very inward looking? There's more and more protectionism. Is that a sort of a dangerous fallout of the crisis? Well, definitely, uh, you know, governments get elected locally, so they have to focus on the local economy. But I would see that everybody in every country, whether it's governments or, or business, realize that today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be competitive worldwide. And you have to develop network worldwide. Uh, if I look at my business, the only way I can succeed in trains and planes is to have partners across the world. Right, trains and planes, and that's what we want to talk to you about and your plans for India. Share with us your presence in the Indian market and how you intend to scale it up. Now, India is very important for us. Uh, for example, we're the producer of the Delhi Metro. Uh, we have a factory in India, in Savli, in Gujarat uh, province. Right. It's very important for us because when we got the Delhi Metro, we wanted to make sure to become a local manufacturer. Right. Uh, to understand the market and participate in the growth that will come in other cities. But let me start with Delhi. Delhi is now going to expand. Right. Not only more cars on, on the network that they have, but additional, additional trains. So we've de delivered about 600 cars so far, metro cars, and, and we're bidding on the new opportunity. So we're very excited, but we'll have an Indian metro for India. All right, so you're, you're planning to scale, scale up in that sense and you're saying that you're going to be bidding for all the new opportunities that are coming up in this space. Yes, absolutely. So there's a lot of uh, metro projects across India, but also other projects. For example, we do a monorail. Right. And monorail is much easier to implement than the metro because we know the traffic in India and when you have to dig up a metro, you, you, uh, you shut down the street for quite a few uh, months, if not years and sometimes. So if you can do a monorail and put the infrastructure rapidly, you can do that uh, much more, much less money than a metro and much more rapidly. Also in India, there's big opportunity for locomotives. Right. A lot of replacement in locomotives uh, that need to happen to modernize the network. We're the world leader in electric locomotives. So there's a, there's a lot of demand for going from diesel to electric in India, so less pollution, more efficient locomotives. And have you been approached uh, for, for similar projects uh, uh, by the Indian policymakers? Yes, absolutely. There's a few projects, very big. One of them we call Madhipura because that's where sure. the government sees that the, the factory would be. And that's a very large contract that we're bidding on, 800 locomotive, dual locomotives, so it's really 1,600 locomotives. So. That would be a, a significant project that we've been following and that should go back to bid very shortly. Mr. Baudouin, how difficult is it to do business in India? I would say every market has its particularities. So that's why when we got the Delhi Metro, we wanted to have a local factory so that we learned the, the way of doing business in India. But why Gujarat? Of huh? all, why Gujarat of all states? Uh, because we were already there for quite a few years uh, doing a signaling uh, a propulsion system for, uh, for the trains in India. We understood how to do business in the state. The state was very proactive for foreign business to get established. 
and uh, we thought that we could recruit the right people. But do you feel the same across India and also at the center? Because a lot of concerns have been raised about uh, uh, the fact that India still has a lot of red tapeism, that it is difficult to uh, get through to policymakers, to get decisions going very quickly. Do you share some of those concerns? Yes, we do. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's frustrating because we find that things take a lot of times to take decisions. But as a global player, rather than coming to criticize, we come and, I, and I have a local team to try to understand you know, what are the place we could do better and understand the market and get adjusted? And where are the place we could share with our Indian customers better practice elsewhere in the world? But any, any advice for Indian policymakers, given that you operate in so many markets in terms of how difficult you find uh, it uh, to do business in India and, and any advice on how uh, they can really assist uh, foreign players uh, such as Bombardier? I think making this, the uh, the systems more transparent uh, so that it's easier to understand how you go about to bid on something, how you go about to understand the criteria uh, in, in, a, in a bid process, uh, um, simplifying overall I think would be a, would be a good advice. And, and right now you do find it very complicated and, and not transparent. Is, is that the sense that you Well, it's get? not that I find it, but if I compare, there's other markets that, right. are, that are more simple. So I'm also in the plane business, and of course there's a lot of growth in, in the commercial aircraft and corporate aircraft uh, world in India, but sometimes traveling within the country is more complicated than it needs to be. So our job as an international company is to come and show best practice elsewhere and I th what I like about India is that you have somebody on the other side that listens and also implements uh, best practice. So there is a good side too. <laughs> oh there's a great side uh, and like I said I don't want to criticize I think the, the opportunity we have as global businesses is that we see best practice worldwide we see things that work better in some countries than others and and then we bring them to local market. How's India comparing with China right now? Uh, you know, I think what I like about India is the entrepreneurial spirit, the, the can-do attitude, uh, uh, the, the wanting to make a difference, wanting to be part of the world economy. For example, in India, we have a lot of uh, our employees, engineers that contribute into our product, uh, IT business that support us. So I see that as, as a very big plus. Of course, in, in China, we saw decision being made a little bit faster to implement infrastructure. All right, let's now talk about uh, the planes business, both in terms of commercial as well as uh, private business jets. Uh, uh, what are your uh, plans in, in, in these areas? Are you again planning to scale up in a big way over the next few years? Yes, absolutely. We make regional jets and regional turboprop airplanes. Today we have a customer called Spice Jet with our right. Q400. They're expanding. We're very excited about that. We're also working on a new airplane called the C-Series. It's going to fly uh, this June for the first time. This is an airplane of 115 and 135 passenger that operates really well in hot and high temperature, high temperature in high altitude. Uh, and, and for us in India, this is a plane that's going to do very well. So okay. now it's developing relationship with the main airline to really uh, penetrate the market. Are you worried about uh, the Indian aviation space because we are seeing uh, one airline which is on the verge of a closure. We're seeing uh, it very difficult for uh, private uh, airlines to make money in India. Do you see that as, as, a, as a team that is across countries, uh, similar aviation troubles or do you feel Indian market is particularly, Indian aviation market is particularly troubled? Well, what I would say is that uh, air travel has been growing and it's right. more and more accepted by the population as a way to move around the country. And because of that, you've seen a lot of growth. And when you see rapid growth, like we've seen in India, you're going to have some success and some that are more, uh, that have challenges. But generally, we see uh, good growth in India. So we have to adjust ourselves and we have to expect that uh, we will have uh, success and failure with new airlines in India. What about business jets particularly? Uh, is that a segment that you think uh, will be increasing exponentially in India? I think so. It's been doing very well for quite a few years. Uh, I think one of the particularity of India is you have a, very, a lot of very successful global companies and global companies to really be able to go see their customers, to be present in their market, they need a global business jet and that's what Bombardier leads the market in is with global products. Right. Uh, so overall, in terms of investments, would you like to uh, put in a number, a figure? What are the kind of investments we can see Bombardier making in the Indian market in the years to come? 
rather than putting a number, so what I would say is that we want to develop a service network for our airplanes so that when we get customers who are ready to service the airplane and keep them flying in a very high reliability uh, figures. And in the train business is expanding our factory as the opportunities come up. All right, here's wishing you all the luck with both your global as well as uh, India plans. Uh, thanks so much, sir, for taking our time to talk to us here. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.